States and the Soviet Union had set themselves against each other as the two rival global superpowers. Both countries sought to defend themselves against the perceived encroaching sphere of influence and ideologies that the other wielded. The Cold War was a time of fear, subterfuge, and most of all, nuclear proliferation. The power brought forth by the splitting of the atom was no longer limited to the arsenal of the US. The two mightiest nations of the time had built nuclear stockpiles capable of destroying the planet a hundred times over. Rumors abound at the lengths that the Soviet Union and the US went to try and gain the upper hand. If some sources are to be believed, President Dwight D. Eisenhower even went as far as to enlist the aid of the extraterrestrial variety. It is claimed that on the night of February 20th, 1954, Eisenhower made a mysterious, unscheduled, late night trip to Edwards Air Force Base to convene his first, but not his last, meeting with extraterrestrial visitors. Who were these otherworldly beings? What did they offer Eisenhower? Why did Eisenhower turn them down? Join the theorists as they take a hike with Ike on Eisenhower and the ETs. Case file 105. I'm Braden. I'm Zell. I'm Dan. I'm Andrew. Booyah. Booyah, shakalaka. What is case file 105? We didn't tell. We didn't say what it was. Yeah, what is uh, it? Well, I just, I wasn't sure. We hadn't really talked about the title, and I've been. Eisenhower and Aliens is what I put on the screen, so that's what we got to go with. Really? Because <laughs> Ike, Ike and the Aliens. I would have totally... <laughs> That's what I titled uh, my notes, Ike and the Aliens. I thought for oh. sure we'd be talking about fucking something to do with Jurassic Park with the way Braden, Braden's dressed. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Had to be dinosaur related. That's Island Braden. I'm going to get a zoom in here. Uh, there's Island Braden. What's up? <laughs> nah, that's good shit. It's required, it's required uh, island wear. They give uh, it to you when you move in. Nice. Are we done? Nice straw hat, bud. Nice straw hat. It is. It is a nice straw hat, actually. And a nice kind of, kind of looks exactly like the hat that Curious George's friend wears. <laughs> the man in the yellow. yellow. Yeah. <laughs> good luck, dude. I like it. Good, good shit. Eyes. Did you make a note on that one? You had a little bit. That's good. Uh, That's good. Yeah, good shit. Good. So, what are we talking about? Eisenhower and aliens. Eisenhower and the aliens. So basically, secret meeting. Between uh, President Eisenhower and uh, UFOs, maybe some wheeling and extraterrestrial dealing going on. Uh, <laughs> who knows? Uh, who, who who wants to take us through the little bit of the background of why this is a thing and why we're talking about it? I think Dan's got like a mountain of notes over there. <laughs> I've seen him. It's he like, does. It's, it's like a, so. Hold on. First it's off, like a, it's a before, slight, you know. Divot of the- Dan doesn't have that many notes because, as we know, the last two weeks, Dan's been working to become Maester Daniel. Uh, oh. he, congratulations to our friend Dan, the most accredited member of the troop. The only uh, accredited member of the troop. Only accredited uh. member of the troop. So congratulations from me to you. Cheers, brother. Cheers uh, to cheers. Dan, Maester Daniel. And before the Thank podcast you. starts, actually, we got to play a little something. Present. A little present for Dan that we all made uh, like a month ago in the studio at one afternoon, mm-hmm. and it goes. It's a little bit of a it's like a little this. bit of a little bit of a journey, but it goes something like this. Mace Daniel, the learner of knowledge, the keeper of secrets, protector of truth. Mace Daniel. Oh, here we go. Knowledge. Secrets, truth, knowledge, secrets, 
truth, knowledge, secrets, truth, knowledge, secrets, truth, knowledge, secrets, truth, knowledge, secrets, truth, knowledge. Cheers, Dan. <laughs> oh, wait. There oh. is a man. His name is Daniel. He set out on a quest to become a master. Master Daniel, learner of knowledge. Master Daniel, keeper of secrets. Master Daniel, protector of truth. Master Daniel, Master Daniel, he's not a master, now he is, no knowledge, now he knows, yet no secrets, now he does, trades and truth, that's no Cheers, Dan. You're beauty. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, wait. Shut the fuck up. Hey, sorry. He was once just a knowledge, knowledge, knows no knowledge. And now he has a plan. Secrets, secrets, keeps no secrets. To be more than Dan. Liar, liar, pants on fire. He commits to die. Knowledge, knowledge, knows no knowledge. He finished his plan. Secrets, secrets, keeps the secrets. Now he's more than Dan. Liar, liar, not a liar. He is the Maester Dan. Maester, Maester, he's a Maester. That was his Maester plan. Maester, Maester, his plan is Maester. Maester. <laughs> to become the Maester Man. Maester, Maester, he's a Maester. Yeah, Dan. Wow. So that's your official theme song that we will play at every episode. <laughs> a lot of blood, wet, sweat, and tears. Oh, that's that amazing, way. guys. Thanks. Cheers, Dan. We, do, we felt bad that you didn't have a theme song, so. Unfortunately, I fucked up the live streams. No one's seen it live, but it'll be on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be on the podcast. <laughs> I had a good laugh. Live stream, oh, live stream's good. going now though. Live stream's going now. <laughs> oh, shit. That was good shit. That was oh, that was fun. That I kind of forgot. Day. I forgot like how much of that we did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, me too. I thought he was gonna cut it. Yeah, and I was like, I was like, I didn't oh, cut yeah, shit. We did this next part too. <laughs> I didn't cut anything. I kept it all. Maester, in, Maester, boys. he's not, not a, a Maester. <laughs> that was his Maester <laughs> plan. <laughs> Oh, uh, so, secrets. cheers to Maester Daniel. Cheers to Maester Daniel. I know I can refer to myself as learned now. Learned, I yeah. Used to describe, I'm a learned well, person. Well, in that case, my learned friend Dan is going to take us through Eisen and Ike and the aliens. Dan, uh, and the aliens. why why do we talk about this? Where does this come from? Well, let me dip into my exhaustive notes on this topic. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. The the theory goes the the ET theory goes that President Dwight D Eisenhower uh, during his terms uh, as president um, on February February twentieth nineteen fifty four 
he made a secretive nocturnal trip to uh to an air force base which was near um his uh what was it this is um this is palm, palm springs, springs yeah. right palm springs ranch right um the smoking tree ranch and at the, on that night he went to go meet a pair of extraterrestrials which were making a landing at the air force base to in order to contact humans and so the theory goes or there are said to be reports that these aliens that landed were Nordics, the the types of aliens that uh, seemingly resemble people of Norwegian descent, and they also communicate telepathically. And so these aliens came to Earth in order to deal, make a deal with the president of the United States, because of course they would. Of course, USA first. Right. This is when America was great. Yeah. <laughs> back back then, back in the day. <laughs> And uh, their offer was uh, for the president of the United States to disarm all nuclear weapons. In in return, they would uh, share their secrets of you know knowledge and technology with the United States in order for the betterment of humankind. And of course, President Eisenhower said, "Get the fuck out." <laughs> Beat it, bud. No deal. No deal. <laughs> Tell them nice. to kick rocks. No deal. No dice. But he said, "I'll shop around." Yeah. <laughs> eh, yeah. We'll call you. But we'll call you. Don't call us. Yeah. We'll be in touch. After this meeting, uh, it is it is said that um, President Eisenhower had a second meeting with extra, extraterrestrials sometime either in late 1954 or 1955. Reports do vary, and this one was made this contact was made with the gray aliens and their offer was to let them kidnap humans and experiment on humans in order to trade um actually i don't think it's really made clear um oh the technology really they would give them technology, technology. In, in exchange for taking so many citizens for non-malicious purposes just to study our dna or implant us with tracking chips or whatever they're but they had to let them know had to who let they them were know. taking yeah H- how right. fucking shitty was that first deal <laughs> really like you're not selling me on the second deal of like that's the winner winner chicken dinner yeah well you have to think back then it's like let them take a couple of uh i don't know who was on the list of people they were taking and how you approve that list but uh, a couple people that you probably don't even know versus your nuclear arsenal, you know, that's going to help you beat the Russians. Eh. Seems like a no, no brainer back then. Yeah. So um, there's also a reported third meeting. I, I couldn't, I couldn't track down a definite. The date um, varies wildly on the third meeting. Yeah. There, there's a reported third meeting that was made by, it's like a former one, former U S government consultant had claimed, but there was, I mean, there's no, there's not really any proof and there's not really any uh, kind of uh, facts to kind of back it up or information to back it up. So I, I don't know who he met with. Could have been draconians. Could have been. Um, I would say it's, you know, I'm going to go with the reptilians on that one. Yeah. Reptilians. Yeah. Yeah. Or w- what's the one? What's the one that Zell's part of? Tranguloids. 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 Yeah. Tranguloids. Yeah. That's uh, Linda Mountain House aliens. Right. So could have been tranguloids. Could have been reptilians. Right. Don't know. So the theories it's vary. Un- they vary widely from uh, and the dates on the third one, but pretty much Eisenhower was first contact president. Is the theory? And why do people? Why do people think? Like, how did this start? Like, what's the main theory? How did someone come up across? Like, all the, he was at his holiday in Palm Springs. He goes missing that night when he's supposed to have a public hearing. Well, he he. They it was stated that he had a dental emergency. After the fact, right? Yeah. Like, and the official story. Official story. He, I think I read that he, someone said that he popped a tooth cap, eating chicken or something. Fried chicken. Fried chicken. Fried chicken. And he mm-hmm. had to have emergency dental dental work that night and he had to miss his public hearing and then they presented the dentist the next Fuck. day. How nice would that be, Azel? How long you've had no tooth, eh? Eight months? He can get it fixed in four, a night? Four fucking months. <laughs> President of the United States. Can't afford. This is the president of the podcast. You can't even get him a fucking tooth. <laughs> <laughs> Dental work's not cheap in Canada. Fucking 
not covered start under our... Patreon following here, people. He's in the tooth. <laughs> I'm gonna start a new a new tier on Patreon <laughs> new for Zell's tooth. tooth. Get Zell a fucking tooth. <laughs> no, I can hear it in every podcast I do. I can hear the way I talk just a little bit different because this fucking retainer is in my mouth with a fake tooth. Well, get rid of the fucking retainer. You look way better. If I no, anyway. but if I take the retainer out, then, then I have a huge lisp. Huge lisp. It's Good. hilarious, but Best. I can't talk with it. It drives me crazy. Okay. Let's what let's unpack this a little. Let's go. Let's back up here. Back it up. So let's get into some just f- loose theorizing here. In my like when I'm thinking about this and I was I we've had some we've been sitting on this for a little bit. I've been thinking I was like, "Okay, well why like how the fuck would they get right to the president?" Right? So obviously there's some you know, some lower level guys. They're not just like calling the president like we're aliens. Get over here. Yeah, like, I'd imagine there's like some meetings. I imagine there's like that red bat phone, like from the from the sixty yeah. Batman show. You know what I mean? That they ring to get a hold of. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's aliens, sir. Yeah, this better be good. It's the alien phone. <laughs> oh, it's good. Good, good, good. But my thing is, was like right away, I was going. I wonder if Eisenhower turned that first deal down because, like, as I was thinking about it, I was like. Same thing. Like, why are you fucking? Why are you going to the Americans? Like, why? Like, what? I'm not saying that you shouldn't have. I'm not saying that wasn't a good idea. I'm just saying why? Like, why? Out of anyone you go to, why the Americans and why that time? And I'm like, things are gearing up for the Cold War and stuff. And I'm like, it does seem to me like a little bit of a manipulation tactic, right? Of like, look, we can help you with your enemies, right? Like, Ooh. we can help you. Well, okay. think about the timing, though, right? Like. You know, you you have at that point in time, they're the only country, and still today, that have has successfully used a nuclear weapon in war, right? Yeah, they're the ones with the most nuclear weapons, and pretty much at that point in time, they are the superpower in the world. It kind of makes sense for me that they would choose the Americans, right? Like well, they potentially could cause the most damage, and let's say if they were to eventually invade Earth, you know what I mean? Why not take out the well, biggest infiltrate fucking- the the prime threat first. Well, exactly. Pretend like you're there to help and then you fucking get rid of their best defense systems and then be like, all right, end over. Well, the thing is okay, though, here's... The, the first one though is the Nordics presented a peaceful offer. But that's what you think, right? Like you, you think they're coming in with a peaceful offer by saying like, Let uh, you guys get rid of our fucking nuclear, your nuclear weapons. We'll enhance your spiritual, your spiritual being. And then we're coming here and fucking laser you all to death. Right. Cause like when you think about it, maybe that's what put, like maybe this entire time, because like you always hear that analogy, like why would like we don't give a shit about ants? We're ants to them. Well, we were probably ants to them until we fucking you know used a fucking atomic bomb, and then they're like, oh shit, yeah, we need to go down here and see what the atom, fuck's going right? on. They're not you know what I mean? Like, well, yeah, we're ants and kind of in the way, but like we're pretty advanced. Probably as far as far as species go, we were pretty advanced when they found us, let's well, say. I, compared here's to them, my, Here's my theory we're, we're about a, that. We're it's, a fucking hyper predator. We're, we're crazy. Our species is fucking insane. We are pretty- I think they would be more worried about us ruining our planet's environment than they would be worried about us fighting them. Because if that if I I if you are able to travel the vast distances of the universe in you know a single lifetime like these aliens can, you would not be worried about something about nuclear weapons in this like they would not be like a threat to you at all if at you know at all if you're able to harness the the you know the ridiculous amounts of energy that it would take for you know instant space travel so i would think they would be more worried about us blowing ourselves up and ruining our planet since Ooh, an earth-like planet that supports life could perhaps be rare it's like it's like if a monkey got a hold of a gun and it was like looking at it and you're trying to trick the monkey into giving you the gun by giving it a banana you're like this is for everyone's benefit that you fucking take the <laughs> banana and i take the gun because something bad's about to happen kind of like that right maybe i guess so yeah I have a little timing thing though. Why, like why I think it could be the states forget the nuclear weapons that might that could well play in if we go back into Zell's theory of everything that has recently updated. Always updating. Bob Lazar made the claim that they had some sort of archaeological dig. We talked about Recovered it on that the podcast. Craft. Yeah. That potentially like the Nazis had gone to Antarctica and found something when we when the Americans and you know the allies won world war ii 
they discovered some documents alluding to something in Antarctica. They sent Admiral Byrd in 46, 47, right, to go Operation High Jump, collect these crafts. They get into some sort of fight. I'm going to say they collect however many crafts, nine, seven to nine. They bring them back. Now they're fucking doing tests. Who's to say that some of those tests... Right, they're doing the flight. Roswell's at the end of forty-seven, I believe. If my date's not f- fucked up, they crash know. one. They're fucking around. We know they're doing tests on them. What if one of those tests is sending a fucking like SOS? Right, like fucking like when we crash our car and OnStar comes on. Do you need assistance? Do you need assistance? And something's fucking beaming out. Oh, some distress, so now, some alien distress some, signal across the yes. galaxy. Across the galaxy, right? It gets picked up by stuff. By the time they come back, that's how we knew it was coming because they're messaging back. We have their technology now. We're deciphering it and we know when they're coming. That's why it goes to Eisenhower like, look, we have this thing. We, You have to come because we have this lined up. We've been Area 51. We've been fucking around with these things. They've been sending us. They're here. They want to meet. They have a proposition. Maybe they want their fucking ships back. I don't know, right? Maybe it's like keep the ships, but in turn we want like you know what I mean? It's a little a little trade trade, but maybe it wasn't just the one. Maybe it was like a broad s- signal going out, so we were getting different messages coming back in. Oh, so we accidentally let the rest of the galaxy know that we're intelligent and we've yeah sending back their own signal from a, a craft that they brought here a long time ago or something. Yeah, whether we crash it like in some weird on star shit. Or it's like, alien, or, alien on star, or alien on star. The Black Knight satellite picked it up and yeah. was like beamed it out, and beamed it out that we're relay. fucking around with. Oh, so they, yeah, they've had that satellite here monitoring us, and then we find their technology. I'm just thinking, there's got to be a buildup. I don't think logically an alien's gonna come and just be like, "Oh, hello, General. I need to speak with the president, please." He's like, "Let me get him on the horn," right? I think this was this had to be something in the works. I don't think it was an overnight thing. Maybe the timing was off, and that's why it was kind of a rush thing. It's like this is ha- we knew this was happening, but it's happening now. We right. knew it was going to be soon in this window of time, but it's now. We have to do it now. They make it like the big thing with the conspiracy people are saying they're saying like it's super weird that he went on this fucking Palm Springs vacation because he just had if he, he just went on a vacation like like a week before. Yeah, but don't you know pre- don't presidents like. Take but vacations like more often than you think, I think they would. Now they do. I think it back then. I think it was a little bit more frowned upon. But now you got fucking old Trumpy going golfing every other week. <laughs> maybe he's meeting with. Maybe he's got tons of alien meetings. If he fucking ever met with an alien, you would fucking know. The minute he did, it would be on Twitter. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Just had the you greatest meeting of my entire life. The greatest meeting of anyone's ever had. The biggest, the biggest, biggest meeting. meeting. <laughs> I'm putting tariffs on the aliens. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, okay, let's let's go back to why why is there a conspiracy about Eisenhower doing it? So it's rumored that he he had a dent he had what well, said that he had dental like emergency dental work that night, and that's what happened. But why did all of a sudden people make the jump from okay th- he lost his cap? Okay, he, why to aliens? So like, where did that come from? No, I answer my own question. Okay, yeah, you got gotta it. answer your own question. So <laughs> I was wondering that too. I like the whole time I was looking, I was like, "Where's the where's the jump?" So it's like, it I think shady, but I think this case is weird because it's like it's it's pretty vague. A lot of avenues for the most part. As much as I love it, it's a cool, it's a really cool theory. But what I could find is this guy Gerald Lights wrote a letter, and it's been passed around ufology for a while. And he claims to have been, he's a whistleblower. He's claiming to have been at um, the Air Force Base. It was, well, it's now it's called Edwards Air Force Base, but I think back then it was called Murak Air Force Base back in the 50s. And he, I think he had his initial letter and then he had five more letters. And he's, he's pretty much the original source of all the theories of that he met with aliens because he claims that he was there and he witnessed these Nordic human looking aliens interacting with Eisenhower. And there was like him and four other people. And he, he goes deep in his letters of explaining why these four people would have been important. And he tries to make his case for why these other four people would have been there along with himself. Doesn't he claim that Von, uh, Warner Von Braun was there? Not Werner Von Braun, actually, but I have in the notes. Maybe I'll, if I can pull it up, I'll put it on the live stream. But that's pretty much the initial story of it. Like that guy's letters and you and like uh, submitted to ufologists. 
It was the original thing. And they're saying that pretty much this pact is from a, something called, uh, what was it called? Project, Project Sigma. You heard of that? Anyone heard of Project Sigma? No, what's mm -hmm. Sigma? So Project Sigma was like the CIA or NSA of the time. It's their, it was their protocol for contacting alien civilizations. And I guess the story I came across is this started in 53. They picked up um, through like a, astronomy, like I'm not sure if it was radio telescopes or what, but they pretty much picked up what they thought was asteroids coming towards Earth. These are from the whistleblowers. I got more whistleblowers, but I'm, I'll, I'll name them after. They picked up these asteroids coming towards Earth and they ended up slowing down and orbiting around the equator. And these are the grays. And I guess the Nordics, this, this is in the letters, man. I'll put them in the show notes. But the Nordics came here and they said, like, we will give you this technology. If We'll help you get rid of these. They call them, like, evil entities, like the grays. They're obviously, they're, like, not friends. So that story was that the grays came. They're orbiting around the equator. The Nordics came, made first contact with Eisenhower because the superpower of the time. Eisenhower turned them down because, as we talked about, the new, like, the nuclear arsenal was, like, a we had to have it, or not we, because I'm Canadian, but the states had to have it at the time because it was the start of the Cold War, like Russia or Soviet Union was testing all the nukes. So like, oh, no, we can't we can't disarm ourselves. Well, here's so the, the okay, man. I wonder, too, if there's something to do with, like, the Nordic race, them being tall, like, long, blonde hair, blue eyes. Like, it's a lot like the Aryan race that Hitler was trying to make. So I wonder if there's a lot of notes. I wonder, because, like, Hitler was into all that weird shit. And trying to make this fucking super race. And I wonder if some American intelligent was like, I don't think we should fucking trust these guys. I was like, I think they were with, I think they were influencing the Germans. That was just the last superpower that they tried to work with maybe or something. Yeah. Thinking? Like that. They were like, they were manipulating the Germans to like kind of do their will. Right. And it, now they have all this writing of like this, you know, this Aryan race, the tall blonde blue eyes, the superior, blonde. Jeans, and then they're like, mm, I think we read about you. Eh, seems, we'll pass. Seems, seems a little fishy. It's just like knowing, like, through history, and like, even before we were in, like, I was in Aliens of, of like the Ar Aryan race, and like Hitler was, was so involved in that and so, like, interested. Mm. And then you read it, like, you go the alien avenue, and then you start reading about these Nordic aliens, and the, they're described exactly how the Aryan race was described as the superior race, right? Like, well, that's a good six. point because if you were an alien race and say you did like, look like this one sub, like sub branch of humanity who had blonde air, like blonde air, um, blue eyes, you could easily manipulate them to be like, Hey, like, uh, where are your ancestors? Like, do you should do this. And they'd be like, Oh shit. So, all right. Wait, 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 you're saying that he turned down the blonde haired, blue eyed aliens. And instead he went with the short, little wrinkled gray looking weirdo. <laughs> they're actually, black, no, they're actually sorry, tall black gray. pupilist eyes. Gray. <laughs> like your deal sounds better. You guys are pretty cute. Well, he's like, holding two blondes. Uh, these like, guys I'm look like sorry, fucking Nazis. Ladies. Sorry. These guys don't. I, I know. I know. <laughs> It's the generals. They don't think it's a good deal. I'm sorry. No, but think about it. Think about, okay, the next, the grays, the second meeting. Well, you know what? I want to stay with this for a second. I want to know. Uh, so that was one thing. Gerald Light's letters are one of the UFOlogy things why people think this is a mass conspiracy. I, I read this. I don't know. Maybe Dan could say there's something called like presidential, like the presidential library of each president has like pretty much every meeting yeah. they've ever been to and all the letters sent and received. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as people started after this started digging into Eisenhower's presidential records and they couldn't find any report about, they have all his dental records, like all his visits and what he has done, but they couldn't find anything from that day in the presidential records of him getting emergency dental work. But they could find from the same vacation, all the people who like met him on the, on, when he arrived on airplane, people who sent him flowers, people who like picked up his luggage. They had all the names of everyone except the doctor or the dentist who did the work. And th that's why, I mean, it could, maybe it could have been missed. I don't know, but that's one of the, that's why people in the, like the conspiracy started. Cause they're like, well, everything's here. The flower girl's here, the, the butler, everyone's in this presidential record, except this dentist who was supposed to do this emergency, this dental work that actually pulled the president from a public, like a public forum. So that's another reason that this conspiracy got started. I think. Thoughts? It's tough because government's so, Government like 
<laughs> process is so like they probably had all those other names pre-planned like pre-done and then this thing comes up and they're just like well we didn't have that written down and they're like it's fine it's fine It'll oh no fine. no but they're saying like all the people that he didn't know everyone who was going to meet when he landed there like on the plane and stuff it has those people well yeah, apparently you have the... to people screened and shit well, apparently the story has also changed over time. Oh, I'm sure it has. Originally, initially it was said that he was made a secret trip to Edwards Air Force Base in to view the remains of the aliens that cro- that crashed at Roswell, New Mexico in 1947. And then the stories later that came later, he actually visited uh, with live aliens. It's true. It does. Uh, the story does vary widely, unfortunately, but we're entertaining the idea for sure. So that was first meeting Nordics, Gerald Light, dental records, the conspiracy starts. Then it's the next year. <coughs> next year, it's Holloman Air Force Base in New Mexico, I believe, right? And this one, I guess, is more detailed. Like, I guess there is 300 witnesses to witnesses, you know, to him landing. Was it called Air Force One back then? The plane the president flew in? Uh, I don't know if it's called Air Force One. I. I... I don't think so. I think it was called something else. So I guess in 1955 or so, give or take, could have been in 1954, he landed at Holloman Air Force Base and about 300 people, go all the stories online, saw him land. And he was actually like um, the Air Force told the towers after he landed to turn off radar. This is the story. Turn off all radar where three craft craft came and landed or one craft landed one craft hovered and one craft just because like on, on the on the distance on the like the horizon i guess and this is where the claims go that he came out of it, air force one or whatever it was called at the time met a tall gray gray alien boarded its ship for about 45 minutes and came out after that goes the story thoughts wow there's no way he's entering a fucking spaceship by himself well yeah it doesn't say anything about others but you're right. No, everything I've not. read, he went in by himself. There's no way 300 people saw that and then it never, only like one person reported yeah. it. That doesn't seem uh, this plausible. People, that's a lot of people. These are the stories online. This is what I could find. But yes, <laughs> the internets. The internets. The source of all truth. All truth. But that's the thing. Like if it's so easy now, if, if say if that first initial story is factual and got out, the way information is passed now, it's so easy to muddy that water. It's so easy, right? You just start putting stuff everywhere of just like little, just change it, just change you're, it. You're telling right. me that they didn't fuck, they wouldn't have neuralized all 300 of those people? Come on. They got the, the mm. giant industrial size neur- neuralizer. Yeah. We're just the one bringing that's it in every, the Washington gonna... Monument, that, like the one they have in the Washington Monument. I'm just <laughs> saying we, we didn't, we want... there wasn't the connectivity between people back then as there is now. Even if there was 300 and they disperse, I'm like, there's some people didn't that aren't going to talk giant about it. In one of the movies? Yeah, they did. Yeah, they had a citywide. It's in the it's in the Statue of Liberty. Uh, okay. What they, I'm thinking though is the they town. would they just line everybody up with the fucking alien. They get like a picture. Everybody's like smiling, like eh, alien. <laughs> and they just neuralize them all at the same time. Ka-ching. Now could be. I, so I, I go ahead, Zell. Go ahead. I was going to say this is when. This is when the pact happened, goes the story. This is when he signed the pact with the Greys that pretty much the terms of the pact were that neither humans would interfere with the Greys or the Greys wouldn't interfere with interfere with the human activity, except they would trade, they would help us develop technology like fiber optics. Um, what do you call it? Like those uh, supercomputer chips. What do you call them? Um, Damn. Damn, what is it? Which one? Supercomputer chips? They're not supercomputer chips. Microprocessors. Chip. Some type of microprocessors. Yeah, let's go with that. They would trade us technology, and then we would allow them to abduct, examine another implant, or take some DNA from our, from some citizens in the United States, as long as they gave them the names and like the names to the Majestic 12, right? The top the top secret, above top secret organization. That was in charge of overseeing like the secrecy of the UFO phenomenon. And then and the public would not be informed. That was the last they were like, they both agreed like the public will never be informed. Uh media will not be informed. The story will stay in compartmentalized between different factions of pretty much a secret government. 
is how the story goes. So that's where the treaty with the Greys come, and then about 10 years later, was it eight years later? When was Betty and Barney Hill? That was the first true... It was like 1961? Something like that. That was the first true... Like terrifying abduction where the people remembered they were supposed to, like I guess in the treaty yeah, 1961, two, like, I guess in the yeah, treaty right. two they were supposed to say like if they did abduct people they would make sure the memories were neuralized let's say wiped they did a shitty job of it and then well, they stopped caring yeah well they signed like, oh. this treaty gave them the technology start and then they start increasingly started abducting citizens and didn't really follow the treaty is how the story or goes. Well, or it things it's like or what go ahead maybe we didn't follow the treaty like as specified. And so they're like, all right, motherfuckers, well, we'll just start taking people. Take everybody. Right? And then you start my to get whole, these terrifying encounters. Is, why would the aliens even need to be, like, need to make a treaty? That's true. Like, well, we, why, they want why, us to, if we're ants, if we're ants, like, do you do, do you make treaties with ants? Yeah, but we're not, we're not ants. The comparison with ants, I don't think is a good one because ants can't do anything really that we can do. Do you make treaties with monkeys? Can monkeys monkeys don't build houses or cars or any type of transportation vehicle? Yeah, but we don't fucking we build interstellar. We don't interstellar travel, travel, but we do travel. Like we do build stuff. Okay, here here's the monkeys thing: monkeys travel. You ever see monkeys they drive do the sign bikes. language? They drive the Power Wheels. <laughs> <laughs> They've done it. It's seen it. They ride the little bikes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go. Okay, ants. Monkeys are better better than ants. I'm happy. I'm fine with that. I don't know, can a monkey thing, lift like ten times its own weight? Fucking pretty much. You ever seen those little fucks? They're strong. If, They're strong as hell. If, if life at our level and like is rare, which it might as it might be like, even though the universe is vast, even life at our level, it, it might be a rare thing. That's a, it, it, it's a possibility. Now, if there's outside interests, right? Maybe they're only making a treaty because they're like, we like you, we just don't want you to go the wrong path. Right. If these guys, these, you're going to get exploited. Right. You're going to get exploited by these people. They don't give a shit. We can help you, right? We'll give you technology. We'll keep them off. We'll keep them out of here, right? But you got to do some things for us, and we're going to do some things for you. You got to let us butt probe some people. Yeah, 100%. Which they could do anyway. It's like, why then why go to the U.S. to do it? It'd be like, why can't you just make it with some other country that's like, it doesn't really matter? Because, well, because the U.S. at this point they time want is to do the that with They want to do it with trust, because if the Nordics or these other alien races come in and they're manipulating and they get their, like, they sink their little dirty claws into our civilization and and start manipulating us, then they're like, oh, it's fucked, right? So it's easier to come forward and be like, look, we're here. This is us. This is what we can do for you. This is what we're hoping you can do for us. And we're just assuming that these beings have, like, somewhat similar, like, emotions as we do. Maybe they just cannot be fucking shitty people. Or whatever beings, maybe they have to come down here, and you know, and that's not even a thought that comes across their mind. <laughs> they're they're just like, half, they're just l- honest aliens. good aliens. Yeah, like, oh, never we know. Can, we must make a treaty to abduct your yeah. people. Man, we maybe must satisfy the protocols. Exactly. Maybe it's a maybe it's a future us. Maybe it's a maybe it's a um some you know like a future highly evolved from a very similar race on another planet, and they're like, then why they're, only take American people? That's what I'm saying. Well, that's all we really know. No, well, well, maybe they didn't just make a pact with America. Maybe they went other places. We don't. Well, maybe they didn't. We don't know. know Maybe they were like they met with the Americans because they're like, "Hey, you guys are fucking around with these ships." We're talking to you, thinking that you're in charge of everything. We don't know. Well, I bet you Nazis. I I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, it was Nazis. I wouldn't be surprised that the Soviets got some stuff. You know, like the Soviets probably had some stuff too. Like it seems like. They probably just hedge their bets. They're like, I think these guys are going to win. This is who we're going to fucking talk could, to. Or maybe you imagine if they came down and they came down in that time and they gave the U.S. like a, a, a super weapon and they gave Russia a super weapon. They're like, you guys both have these super weapons. You it, Use them. You're going to annihilate the planet. You can kill each other. Right. And we've seen the longest era of peace. And I know people are going to argue like, wow, we're in the Middle East. We're in all these other countries. They're like, yeah, but they don't have super weapons. But well, we already had nukes. Yeah, but so, come on, nukes why, a big if, bomb. If they imagine both had imagine super some sort of like some like insane like some let's get a, some alien stuff right. like I'm saying it, this will melt the core of the nuke, earth. Maybe the yeah, nuke we, maybe the nuke is alien though. Yeah. Oh, they gave us the it's, nuke? Maybe they gave us oh, the nuke. Not, right? 
And maybe they're like, that was a fucking mistake. We need to take those back. Yeah, stop with those nukes, you idiots. You didn't, you didn't maybe, do it right. No. Maybe one of the... <laughs> maybe no. the. I'm with Dan on that one because the nuke, is just, it's like a really big bomb. It still it's feels based human. It's based on solid theory. We did yeah. that. Yeah. I think That's... I think if they were going to give us something, it'd be unless like... The, unless Oppenheimer and crew were a bunch of aliens, Nordics, looked like us. Making they weren't blonde and blue eyes. <laughs> I don't like. Could I, you imagine right, if know. they were working with the Germans before, and that's why we brought we all the Germans set, over because they're like, we know you were working with these fucking aliens, motherfuckers. Well, and what and they showed you, fucking, they why, showed us some shit too. Well, why would it together? Why would Hitler base his fucking i like his idyllic fucking person off of someone that looks nothing like him? You know what I mean? He wants to base these people off these fucking aliens that have come down that he thinks yeah, the did, ideal being. Did Hitler even have blue eyes? No. No. Why he had. I don't know how his eyes. He had brown hair, though. I appreciate brown, brown hair, brown eyes. Like, brown ha- hair, ha- brown eyes. Hazel yeah. eyes or something, yeah. Hazel eyes. Right? What? Hazel's like green and Greeny brown. brown. Greeny brown. No, I mean, yeah, I know, but I'm like, he had a hazel eyes? I had I'm pretty eyes. sure he had brown eyes. I have no eyes. idea. I, I, just, I, I just remember hearing like he, ne- he didn't have blue eyes, and he obviously didn't have brown hair, so or what, blonde hair. Yeah. Well, and like it makes sense. Like he's, he's Or he dyed it. Black? Like you think he went yeah. through an emo phase? Or- <laughs> <laughs> he did. He was an artist. Maybe you're right. He did have the little flip sometimes. <laughs> Hitler was an emo alien Nordic. You heard it here first. Yep. Breaking news. Breaking news. Got it. Uh, but okay, so let's look. Could it have happened? I'm gonna say 100 percent yes because I've seen that movie. It happens. It maybe, happens for sure. Maybe look the at the Nordics, technology boom. Maybe the Nordics were never aliens to begin with. Maybe they were just fucking Nazis. Because wasn't Hitler working on some type of flying disc? Well, maybe. This is a theory. The theory goes with the hollow or semi-hollow Earth. And these people aren't even, these Nordics aren't actually aliens. They are just the advanced humans who got, who went underground before the cataclysm 12,000 years ago. That's a theory I've heard before too. So they're actually, maybe they do have a secret base in, in, in Antarctica on, like by some volcanic fissure which keeps it warm underground and they can live there. I don't know. But, but why 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 would you fuck with us then? Why would you meddle? Like why wouldn't you just well, maybe like, there's not enough of them. Maybe they're, we're, maybe they're we're old humans. We're here. No, maybe they're trying to take over the planet again. They're like, okay, we don't have enough numbers. These guys are You nukes. could you could just come out and be like, listen, motherfucker, we're an ancient civilized race thirty thousand years ago. Listen to us and everyone would be like, Oh shit. Okay. You think, you think what if there's only like a thousand of them? And you got yeah. versus the armies of the world. No chance. I don't care what kind of flying saucer you got. Yeah, it's true. We just fucking melt the... Well, you know what? Maybe one of those treaties is why we can't go to Antarctica. Well, there, the Antarctic Treaty is for no military intervention, on, right? It's only yeah, scientific. No military. Yeah, I don't know. That's a, there's there's tons of like monitoring stations and like science facilities. Tons, yeah. Like there's yeah, always I think science. Like twenty thousand scientists. Somebody there. Twenty thousand scientists that are down there all the time or something like that. In all the different bases. I just look at the technology boom from like that point on. Like the technological boom has just been like on such a steep uphill from it's been that du- point forward. Been like doubling every year since whenever. Insan- since insane. This first so I'm computer. like, to me, I'm like, is that human or did we just get a leg up? Right? Did we get a little? Is a little bit of a cheat code? Little. So I don't have to use my rotary phone anymore. Hey, well, it could be as crazy as if these ETs are that advanced. It could be not. They didn't drop some technology here. They fucking. They can hack it. They are like they're hacking into brains. They're in. Incep- they're incepting people with knowledge. Because you know yeah, how we, t- we talked about acquired savant syndrome. Yeah, you know how like oh, Tesla and stuff. They like he seen he could he couldn't draw it physically but he's seen it in his mind and he could just like build these machines he didn't actually make them he just like seen them in his mind maybe they're planted there like a, maybe that maybe a- ac electricity was the first step the aliens implanted well, in humanity yeah because those nordics were telepathic right exactly they don't have to like show you how to work it just all of a sudden it just appears in there like someone just uploads it into your mind and you're like oh i know how to this make this generator <laughs> it, this it does put a it does put a different twist on like when we think about like back in the day with Tesla and like Benjamin Franklin and how we went for ACDC instead of fucking whatever Edison. Was. Edison. Yeah. Edison. Yeah. That's what I meant. I, I'm not a maester. So no, nope. uh, <laughs> you do not, not a maester. You do not get your own song. Now here's the thing. I'm like, well, 
I, I was reading that had we gone with Tesla, like a lot of the technology we have wouldn't have worked based on like the having all the electricity in the air and shit. It just, it wouldn't have, we wouldn't have been advanced if we would have went that route. Like with, with that route, with it would have it would have required a lot more power. Is what it would have actually been. Like it would have worked within a certain distance. I thought like GPS. Like you, I, I can't remember what it said wouldn't work. GPS or there's some other shit. Would be no. Be, we have be no wireless signals. No, well, no cellular phone because it would yeah. have, the amount of power. I think in the like in the atmosphere would have disrupted all electrical communication wirelessly. Yeah. So it's That's like what they say. Even though it seemed at a time that maybe that was a step in the wrong direction. The long game makes more sense. So when you're we're talking about the implanting thing and then manipulating things just a little bit, I wonder if those are instances in our history where they've come in and been like, you know, maybe hedged the bets a little bit and been like, nah, right. we're gonna go this way, right? We're gonna go this other route because it's gonna be better in the long run. Because there's no way they're thinking about all that shit, right? That makes sense. Hmm. Yeah, could be. Could very well be. Now, what uh, what else do we got for why why is it such a big conspiracy? Why Eisenhower? Why then? Whistleblowers. Okay. I mean, whistleblowers. The whole it brings it. It's just like I don't know. It's just a good sounding theory. Like it's you got the whistleblowers. You got Dwight D. Eisenhower. You know, World War II hero. Uh, they bring in Five the Majestic Twelve. They bring in all that stuff. They kind of like you know. Put it all together, little pieces. Like it's a good sounding theory. Okay, well let's let's you talk. Know, about they also had the thing where that night that he was supposed to meet with the Nordics, the Associated Press reported that he had died of a heart attack in Palm Springs, or they had mistakenly reported that. Um, you know, just just these kinds of little bits and pieces that make everything sound weird. So all kind of line up. Eisenhower, old Ike here. He was what the. 34th president or perhaps he did die of a heart attack and he was replaced replaced by a fucking alien but seriously like was daniel is he was he's like the 34th president right 34th 35th uh i don't know if top man i think he's a 34th i remember reading that so do you think okay. since they're yeah, the, 34th the next, yeah now trumpy is what 44th is he were we on 44 45 45 so 44 45 since then, we've had 10, maybe 11 presidents since old Ike. Have all these other presidents now been included in this type of information? Do they now know? Nope. I don't think so. Yeah, because in that, they can't. There's they no can't, way out of these fucking 11 guys had no, has nothing slipped yet. I think, well, that guy, he wrote a book, uh, Philip Corso. He was called The Day After Roswell. And he's the man who, he claims that, it was like he, he released it like a year before he died. He was like fucking 88 he went on coast to coast. He told a story. Then he released the book that he was the guy who was in charge of stewarding the recovered craft from Roswell. And he talks about how, as the years went on, it got more compartmentalized, and every like every little like a little faction had a piece of this information, and then slowly it degraded till everyone just knew a little tiny bit. No one knew the full picture. There was so much disinformation. That by the time like the 70s, 80s rolled around, the original story was so fragmented, no one could ever find the truth. And he leaked the story just before he died. He wrote the book. I listened to an audiobook. It's it's kind of a boring listen, but it is interesting the stuff he says about like how like, oh, someone was in charge of this, someone was in charge of that, someone was in charge of that. And eventually, after four, six, eight years, those people moved on to a different project. The next person was brought in, but it wasn't given as much information. And so on. And after four or five more of those changeovers, you know, it got lost. So, and, and they always said, like, elected officials are temporary, like, are temporary, right? President, temporary. Why, why, why let these guys know? Well, yeah. And, like, I remember, wasn't it, it was Bill Clinton. Didn't he make part of his platform that he was going to fucking release all the shit with 50, Area 51? Mm, probably. I remember that. And then as soon as he got elected, that shit just disappeared. Like, you can't do that. Yeah, no, it's not going to happen, man. But or like, maybe he was fighting to do that, and then all of a sudden they're like, listen, man, you got to blow you underneath the fucking desk. You're out of here. You're done. Done, son. I think that was... I mean, that didn't, like, kick him out of office. He just got no. impeached. It wasn't he was it? he was covering up drug deals, like drug drops. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah, that's right. He, he had a lot more going on than just getting blowies in the office. <laughs> okay, uh, let's, let's talk, okay, let's talk about, for a second... 
um, Ike's great granddaughter, Laura Eisenhower. Uh, did any of you guys even give five minutes to anything she had to say? I gave no. maybe five minutes, <laughs> like two minutes. She's <laughs> that shit crazy. Yeah. Okay. She's, I'm glad you said it, not me. No, she is. She's that shit crazy. I was listening to her podcast, or she was on a podcast I was listening to, and like within 15 minutes, I was ready for her to start what, trying what, to sell sell me and what, what was oils. she saying? What was she saying? What's she saying about eyes about it? She talking about the Eisenhower stuff or? Yeah. Well, she's trying to profit off her great, great. Is it great, great grandfather? It's great, great. Yeah. Single great. Great. So just great grandfather. Like that's. I don't know. How she she said she she got intrigued because she, she had heard this story and then she started researching like the family documents and she found um, like documents that corroborated the story and then she started speaking about it because she knew and now she like she's very spiritual and in tune and like she does all these weird like spreading divine femininity and all this weird stuff and she was asked to join a mars colony uh it's, it's she's her title is her, her <laughs> title I is i took, a, I took I took a giant step backwards when we I started falling going into her. I was like, "Whoa, that's an avenue I'm not quite prepared to go down." She t- she's a self-titled global alchemist. Yeah, global alchemist. Yeah, and like I've seen Full Metal Alchemist, which is pretty badass. So, how do I get that title? Yeah. Well, you're already a maester. You can't have two titles, can you? Can't maester have- alchemist. <laughs> yeah, she says. Um, from the outcome of this deal um, has resulted in a shadow government with an insidious agenda to control the population through the use of chemtrails, genetically modified food, false flags, and mind control through the media. Instead of simply a military industrial complex, uh, Laura Eisenhower says there is an extraterrestrial military industrial complex that she became aware of through former MI6 operatives. What operatives are talking to Eisenhower's <laughs> great granddaughter, Laura, of all people? Just, Laura, I got to tell you something. Your dad was the 34th president 45 years ago. <laughs> and I've been holding this tight to the chest and I want to. That's not what an MI- MI6 is British intelligence. So uh, oh, I right. I want to get this off my chest. That's Australian. That's Australian so no. <laughs> she does do a podcast. <laughs> Maybe we can get her on. Maybe we can talk she, to her. She has her own podcast? Yeah, she does her own podcast. Well, not anymore. You guys just beaked her. I didn't <laughs> beak her. I said she, Andrew said she's crazy. You're not me. Fuck, Andrew no. said batshit crazy. No. Yeah. I'm more bad reviews. <laughs> I held my tongue. Fuck. Laura Eisenhower's just going to blow up our iTunes reviews with one star. Yeah. Oh, Andrew's, no. Andrew is a hater of divine femininity. That's oh, why. <laughs> and alchemy. Uh, and alchemy. And alchemy. Yeah. Not and true. Alchemy. I love Full Metal Alchemist. That shit was Good dope. shit. <laughs> Okay, well, we ha- we, let's go through a few more. We got Laura. We got Laura Eisenhower. She says some stuff, right? And well, you know what? Uh, Eisenhower's last speech is the one where he talks about the military-industrial complex. You ever yes. hear? It's a pretty. It is a kind of a cryptic speech. At least that one section of it is. I'm not going to play it right now, but if you haven't seen it, go li- go listen to it. It's, uh, he's it is. Much- it is he's cryptic, more, but I don't know if it's cryptic that it leads me to believe in aliens. No, it's cryptic. It's that's going. The cons- I mean, that's the that's, conspiracy I, of. I, the military, where he pretty much says we we've created a eternal arms community where there's millions of people involved in it, and we have to continually go to war, and we should be careful that they do not under like de- like degrade our democracy through right. Pretty much is what he's saying. Yeah, I mean, he already knew the kinds of stuff that was happening because he was already on the the verge of like he, he, he was signing the Operation- checks. Well, he was on opera. You know, he knew about Operation Gladio. And we talked about that on our other thing, but he, that was the beginning of the military. That was one of the beginnings of the military industrial complexes. It's like one of those uh, type of deals. So he knew the kind of stuff that was going on. And then and, he's warning people to be careful. Ooh, you got to be careful about that. Yeah. Because, because the, the military industrial complex pretty much cuts out like the president. They don't, they don't care about that stuff. No. So, you know, he not. felt like it was his, I mean, I, it doesn't just because he was the president of the United States doesn't mean he was a bad person. Wasn't nope. he you know, in the, I wasn't be a he genuine a general? guy. He just said, you guys need to know that, you know, there's some people trying get to do real some weird. Shit. Yeah. Wasn't, we don't do something. About wasn't it. he, wasn't he a military guy though? Too? Yeah. He, he was, was like a five-star general. Of the allied forces in like Europe. 
Like, how many other five star generals have become president? I'd be curious. Wait, what? Probably what is none. He? Like, yeah. What he's is a he? Five star general. Yeah, he's the real deal. Yeah, he's a badass. What'd you say he was? Five star general. Based on how many reviews? <laughs> <laughs> How many? How many one stars? Where's where's he? Can no way he could have more than a four point two. Yeah, even, we're not even a five star podcast. <laughs> Some bullshit. That's my. Tell me he didn't get one one star. That's it. One one well, star. Well, we also didn't command Allied forces in World War Two, so. I mean, okay. He's still like he's still five stars. Or is it? Does it stop once he passes away? There's no more ratings. Well, when they give us command of the Earth forces in World War III, when we fight the extraterrestrials, then maybe we can get that extra star. I think we need really more in charge of I space I don't know force. how the stars work, but... You know what? Now that you just said that, Dan, I have to talk about another another whistleblower. General yeah. Douglas MacArthur. You ever heard of this guy? Uh, yeah, yeah, the name rings a bell for sure. I shall return. So he pretty much... pretty sure that's him, yeah. He pretty much made a speech that he said... I, I wrote it down here, but I can't even read, read my own writing, but I'm going to try. Okay, the nations of this world will have to. F- what do we got here? Will have to unite for the next war will be on an interplanetary will be an interplanetary one. The nations of Earth must someday make a common front against attack by people from other planets. That motherfucker said that and quoted. <laughs> yeah, MacArthur was also getting a little crazy at the end of his. This was in 1955. Huh? 1955. No, I'd like- his career went went kind of nutballs. He he wanted to nuke Korea. That was his thing. Well, probably a whole bunch of people like did. When we were in the Korean War, he's like, let's just glass them, just nuke them, and all of them. You know, that was his plan. He was he was he was kind of losing it. It's kind of weird. We didn't. When did he die? Use nukes more did, after. How old was he in 1955? He must have been not fucking ready to no, die. No, but he was like he was already. Let's see, 1955. Uh, MacArthur. Anyways, he's he's one of the guys along with Philip Corso who pretty much is saying in aliens and not now we can go to a different country too. We can bring in our boy Paul Hellier from the Great White North. He was a Canadian Ooh. defense minister and he says four types of aliens that they know of are visiting this planet right now on national news. This motherfucker said it a bunch of times. So there, the, there's I I don't doubt that there's some sort of deal. Dan brings up good points of like, why would they deal? Right. But I'm like, there, there is, there's something to it. When I look at all the facts and I look at like all the weird stuff that happened around that time, the boom afterwards of both UFOs, the like technology advancements, it all kind of like lines up. It makes, it makes sense to me. Like it makes sense. It's, I don't think it's grass or straws. I just think we're missing some vital information to make it all oh, stick together perfectly. Yeah, we're like obviously no one really knows, but it, like weird shit has been happening for a long time, and then it gets unfortunately fragmented so many different ways. It's impossible to tell it what actually happened. Blows but. me away that these people come out and they're like, "This is it. This is what's happening." And we're like, ah, "He's fucking crazy." Yeah, he's crazy. What the fuck? Fuck that guy. But I'm like, I'm like, ah, I'm trying to think. I'm like, it's hard because I'm not old, but I'm like, when I'm old, I'm like, try to think to my future self. I'm like would I have the balls to like just go on TV and just like make a bold fucking lie like that? Like on national TV. Old lie. After like, after a, like a lifetime of like public service and shit and like military to just be like, depends how what? lucrative it is for you. Kind of yeah. Well, I, Paul Allen's not fucking, he was not rolling in bank. He's not Scrooge McDuck now diving in <laughs> coins. Like <laughs> well, he's, He's just fucking a regular guy. He, like he did that out of the blue. It's not like he was like. Does he have any books? Does I'm going on books? Paul Allen's. Oh, that's a good question. That's a book? very good point. Why do you have to write a book though? Because that's why he's fucking pumping his tires. No, and he's like, yeah. Check out my book. Andrew, it's dropping next Andrew, month. That's a real good point wrote, because if he had a book released and then he's going on the news saying this and then it's like all of a sudden a you can find Paul Allen's book. Paul Hellier? Talking Paul about? Hellier, yeah. Did, Paul, did he write a book? I'm looking right now. Paul Hellier book. Paul Hellier book. And if oh. there's one released coinciding with when he said that, I'm going to be very upset. Oh, he's written a lot of books. <laughs> All right. UFOs are as real as airplanes. Uh, yeah, because the thing is, is like you write a book and you release it 
people are going to read it. And then by the time somebody actually, you know, investigates it or takes the time to be like, I need to go investigate this and figures out, you know, something to either debunk or disprove any of your stuff in the books. By the time they find that out, nobody cares. Yeah, but what if you can't like disprove what he said? Money. What if you can't disprove what he said? Maybe he huh? he wrote it when he was yeah, old. That's even better because if if there's nothing like if there's actually nothing, then how do you disprove nothing? I know, well, exactly. but at, what's, at the same time though, prove it. Like, what, what do you have other than your fucking word? Yeah, what if what if you were what if you're telling the truth? No one's gonna believe you. That's what we're saying. Like, what if like you you spent your whole life in the air force or in the military and you've seen these things and on your deathbed you're like. I can't hold it anymore. I'm going to write a book. And everyone's like, oh, this guy's just trying to make money when he's old. Yeah, don't wait till your deathbed. But then yeah. gonna, if you're going to rat, if I'm you're going to if you're going to disclose shit, do it while you're part of it. Yeah, but, yeah, but here's the life. thing. I think they, there's a real yeah. fear of death. Yeah, I get that. But death, if it's, it's, an imprisonment and and a monetary penalty is a real thing. Is not down in the. So in how the, come none of these people lose have like pulled off the like the really simple idea of a dead man switch? You know, like if I die. Explain. If I die, information will be released. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to release little bits of whatever. And you can't stop me because if you do, then I will release. Like Everything. if something happens to me and I don't make a phone call every Tuesday to this per to somebody at this, you know, whatever. Or I don't report to some, you know, I would be like, you know, I don't mail a letter to a certain place at a certain time. Yeah. And then, then they're, they're like, they're like, Dan, they're like, they're like, do it, Dan. The you know what? Dan, we just what found some kid porn on your computer. Dan, how many dead men switches do you have? Yeah, Dan. How yeah. many dead man switches? Let's go. Let's what go. do you What do you got? I'm, how I'm many a maester, you got? so I have at least like five. Yeah, at least fair. five. Yeah, for sure. I'm just saying it doesn't matter. Like even if you were to do that, they'd they'd have you arrested on like some kid porn charges or something, and you'd just be locked up. That's it. You're locked up. And they're like, they're probably like, fucking release it. We don't give a shit. We'll muddy the water so much, no one will be able to tell what the fuck you wrote or what we wrote. And I'd be like, it's a shit. Then it, what they have must not be that good. Oh, exactly. Like I'm just saying, like in in a case like this. In the UFO field, there's just so many people that are saying stuff, and everyone's just like, "Oh, they're all crazy," but they all kind of say the same thing sometimes. Yeah, well, why yeah. wait till you're 88 and fucking see now? Well, a lot of people, like, a lot of people don't wait till they're 88. William Cooper, Naval Intelligence, 1970, 73. He's the guy who broke that Project Sigma was a real thing. What we're talking about that was the agreement, the contact of alien civilizations. This guy was like privy, well, he claims to be privy to information that led him to find out that it's true. Like, Who I, knows? He, but he, like, they all kind of say the same thing. So it, it's all else, the fucking same. On here? No, no matter what conspiracy we do, it's all the same. It's I, I have no doubt in my mind that aliens exist for sure, but I don't believe any of this fucking shit because I haven't seen anything. Like, show me something tangible. Give me something, right? Give me some fucking evidence. That's the easy way out. Charles Snuggs, 1991, claimed that his father was with Eisenhower in 1954 on the day that he met the aliens. Oh, that's claims. All. I'm just saying. Paul John Hellier, Lear. one one going I'm thing back to claims, Paul Hellier. Claims ain't nothing. Words words are cheap. Actions Paul, are worth talk that. is cheap, motherfucker. Let's John go. John Lear, son of uh, the guy who created the Lear jet. He also claims. claims. What's that guy from Skunk Works? What the f motherfucker said? Uh, Seth, what's his name? Showstack. Not Seth Showstack. No, unfortunately. <laughs> no, Seth Showstack. That guy said fucking. We, we have the technology. Certified. We they they pretty much said like uh, science fiction science fact. A lot of people, a lot of people. Robert Dean was a master sergeant, and he's another guy who claims that there was four species, same as Paul Hellier, the Greys, the Nordics, the Tall Greys, and the Reptilians. Phil Schneider, the motherfucker from the underground bases, got his fingers melted off. He had bleh, bleh, melted off. What do you have? Like something like that, right? Something like that. Hey, I'm he claims probably like that. They all claim. I don't know. They're all crazy, or some. If they're all crazy, maybe. Something's going on. Just a little viewer note here or a listener note. Before we started this one, we were like, we don't know if we have enough to do a whole one. Let's bring some more topics to the table. And we've done a fucking hour on this one. Just <laughs> theorizing on shit. Unbelievable. It's a cool theory, man. I love the theory. I think it's fucking awesome. I agree. I think it's really Secret cool. Secret government deals it? with aliens is neat. It's one of like, the coolest things. It's, yeah. Why not read that? Uh, does anyone have any other things or should we get on to some other business? Um, that's, 
I mean, that's it. It's really hard to go any more detailed because it's so uh, sporadic in the tellings of the stories that got, it's impossible. Ike, at least. I got I mean, one we, other we'll thing. We'll probably dig into some other presidents later. I've got yeah. one other thing to say kind of on this topic, but we'll yeah. save that for after hours. So if you want to hear that, head over to our Patreon, get on our after hours to hear that. But now let's get into some space news. Oh, space news. I got to play the song. You just, it came out of nowhere. <laughs> Here it comes. Space news. Yeah, on YouTube. Well, we got to talk about uh, the plans. Some people have asked, are we going to be at Area 51 oh, September yeah. 20th for the official uh, let's storm Area 51 to see them aliens? They can't stop us all. They can, motherfucker. <laughs> they can, they can stop can. you all. There's not enough. Even a million people, there's not enough. No, no, no. Here it is. If actually a million people showed up, they probably couldn't stop you. But the thing is, there's no way a million people could get there if they tried. You wouldn't be able to get through the airport and the road and cars. It's impossible. No. You'd never be able to yeah, get a million people there. If yeah, you got 10,000 f- people there, that would be impressive. Where would they even park? It's, well, that's like, I mean, you're down dri- the road. You're just driving in the desert. You're just parking in the desert at that point. I'm going to give everyone like, that's planning to go to that event some great advice some old lady at the Alien Inn gave to me. Don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. <laughs> Don't be stupid. Everyone's real plus, serious around here. Don't like, be stupid. We already went. Yeah, we've seen it. We're not we going. Seen it. We've been there. We've done that. We're going to the Bermuda Triangle. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're, yeah. We're let me, let me, the Brayden's already dressed for it. He's already got the stuff for it. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're going. Bermuda. Bahama. Come, come, come on, pretty, pretty mama. 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 Anyway. Tiago, Montego. Girl, you want to make it to the Edison. And then we'll take it slow. That's where, where she we wants want to, to go. go. Yeah, I couldn't really remember that one. Anyways, if you're going, it'd be it'd be a cool event to go. But like, be fucking careful. They killed they killed a guy when don't we go. were there just, just before. Don't fucking be literally stupid. Shot a don't guy. go. They literally don't do shot it. a guy. Why would you do it? Just don't. Couple days. So listen, some people are gonna go. It doesn't matter what we say. Um, I'm just saying, don't be stupid. Right? You know don't do it. This is what's gonna happen. This say ten thousand people show up. They're, I don't think they're going to have to shoot anyone because I bet you what they have is they have those fucking hypersonic sound fucking weapons that make you feel like your head is on fire from the inside. Everyone's going to drop to their knees and they're like, turn around. Ah! Or you, tear gas. Yeah. I mean, tear, non-lethal. Bean bags. Tear gas bean bags are real effective. Yeah, yeah tear I gas. Do. Some If you're really, no, there's going to be some people who show up with fucking uh, respirators though. Self-contained respirators. They won't get tear gas. They'll be all right. But Bean bags. How many? Uh, you got ten th- do you think they got ten thousand bean bags rounds ready to yeah. go? Oh fuck yeah! yeah. Rubber bullets, rubber 10, bullets. 000? Yeah, they through got- a Gatlin gun. And think about it. <laughs> think about how many trigger happy people you have working at Area Fifty One that don't get to do fuck all ever. Yeah, oh, and how happy like, they please are to just come. run people off please. that dirt road. Oh yeah, now they're Actually, like they're cross like, the line, motherfucker. I think cross I saw it. a couple Twitter posts and stuff of people like army guys like have they you have to go to special meetings because of this. Like so I have to go to extra shit on the weekend because you people can't stay the fuck away from Area Fifty One, which is like a that that's what something that would happen in the military. It's just like you get stupid meetings for stupid shit. Uh, so that's, anyways. Like I said, just if you're going, take pictures. Don't, don't get us some stupid. alien tech. Send it our way. Don't die. But, uh, don't get don't the be pie. stupid. Don't die. Don't get the pie. Bring yeah, your own pie. Don't get the pie from the alien in. Bring your, bring, yeah, bring, bring, your bring your own food. Yeah, bring your own. That's excellent bring your own advice. Food. That's what I. That's the advice. Best advice yeah, we can yeah. give you. Yeah, hundred percent. Bring your own food. I got uh, NASA drops insane map of four thousand planets outside of our solar system. That's dope. Um, in just a few decades, this is actually crazy. When I was a kid, um, there was no planets. Like there was no like goalie like planet. It was like. Nah, and now we, there was like, we didn't know it was like, ah, there could be other stuff. There has to be. Now there's, we, we can't turn our fucking head without finding planets. Like we're finding planets everywhere. So it's a really cool time. And I, man, uh, NASA posted on some other spaces, NASA posted some unbelievable photos of the Milky Way uh, to celebrate the uh, Chandra X-ray Observatory's 20th anniversary and unbelievable photos. Go check them out. Um, check them out. But I'm saying this because I look at these photos and they're so fucking spectacular. 
And I cannot wait for that James Webb telescope to get in fucking space. When's it 2022 now or something though? 2022, yeah. I can wait, man. I can wait. Hubble's been up there for so long. This is going to be some fucking 4K Ultra HD galaxy photo. It's going to be unbelievable. Unbelievable. The shit it's going to be like the jump from 4G to 5G wireless technology. Yeah, it's Dungy, going to be like dun, when did dun. we when did the Hubble go into space? I don't know, ninety something. Yeah. It's going to be like having a TV from the nineties, and then being like, you know what, it's time for a new TV. Let's go buy a new You're one and just CRT be like CRT to like plasma oh, screen, like, yeah, eight, LED, eight K, black or blacks. <laughs> True blacks, a thousand True blacks. blacks, so many blacks. <laughs> You're like, I thought there was one black. They're like, no, there's a no, million blacks. No. They're all different blacks, different different shades of black. Uh, so that'd be like, that just made me think I had to talk about that again. Uh, what else I got here? Um, we got to talk about, uh, SpaceX dragon. Oh yeah. What's up? Third what's up docking at the space station, a new record for a private company. Nice. Oh, nice. And then that was, that was two days ago upon recording this. And just two hours ago, the live video, I watched it of it touching back down safely. Nice. Reusable rockets, cool. man. It's so cool. They just fucking. <laughs> Land back down, they could ship them off again in 24 hours. It's cool because, like, you know, late 80s, early 90s kids now are now scientists. So these, our generation nerds are in charge of naming these things. So we're getting yeah. fucking badass. Dragon. Yeah. Dragon. 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 Falcon Heavy. Yeah, like fucking badass. Mm-hmm. And then you got, then you got NASA with their big, sis, their space launch system. Like, that's fucking lame. Yeah, Call it something cool. lame. It's because it's cooler. government, man. They can't offend anyone. So they're like, uh, what's not going to get anyone in trouble? Space launch system. See exactly on, NASA. what it is. I know we got uh, some listeners who work at NASA, more than one. So come on, name. Well, NASA's name. just trying to avoid those one star reviews. Yeah, it's true. Keep it PC. <laughs> yeah, yeah keep I understand why. Yeah, you know, yeah, hundred percent. You can't. Yeah. yeah, they've already got to deal with flat Earth or one star reviews. So yeah, no, <laughs> made anybody else more angry? This gets yeah. so many messages a day from flat Earthers. <laughs> debate me, debate I gar- me. I guarantee debate they me. do. I would like. I, that's that's like a fact. I would. Just, Assume that's a fact. It's every day. Uh, sure. Anyone else have any other space news? Nope, that's all I had. Just the Falcon, Falcon Heavy, um, or Falcon Rocket. All right, I got a UFO case file of the week. Why don't you uh, case file of the week? Yeah, cue one. All right, cue it up. Well, right. cue it up. Just just cue the music. Don't even turn the system on. Just cue the music. I got one ready. You got one ready? All right. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, it's gonna print. It's still, it's still gonna print to you though. Yeah, it's get it printed. What a waste of paper! I told you I already had it. But. Hemp paper, buddy. I what said hemp paper. paper system. You gotta save trees. Oh. Um, what do you got? This is a fan. This is a fan submission. So I'm I'm giving these ones priority now. So if you if you want your story heard, send it to alientheorists at gmail.com and I will read your submission live on the Hor- air. Good or horribly, bad? Horribly. Horribly. Punctuation. I don't care. You just you send it. I'll read it. Um. Some, let me just check. I got to pre-read this just a little bit. Make sure you said if uh, if he said to use his name. I'm not going to use his name. Don't Clarify use his at name. the top if you want me to use your name in your stories. I will. Uh, I'm going to default to not using names. I'm going to make up names, and his name's going to be um, Sylvester. So, <laughs> Sylvester. I don't know. It just came to my head. Sure. Um, back in 2005... I was with my family at our cabin in North Carolina. I was in the 10th grade at the time and took a friend with me on this particular trip. Our cabin is located right beside a creek known as Deep Creek. (laughs) It's real shallow. (laughs) Real shallow creek. Uh, That is about 30 to 40 feet wide. Great for tubing, but also has a background rooted in Native American history although I don't have a lot of knowledge about that. So one night, my friend and I walked up the creek from the cabin to a small sandy area we referred to as the beach. Across the creek from this point is a campground that is usually pretty busy this time of year. It was late, and there wasn't much activity going on at the campground. So... We are standing on the beach enjoying the silence when all of a sudden I see a bright orange orb hovering over some trees on the campground side of the creek. I start thinking to myself that I felt 
I was being watched and observed by whatever this was. I tell my friend exactly that. Only that. He replies that he felt the same thing, even though we hadn't even discussed seeing the orb in the first place. At this point, it begins to move across the creek and towards us, making no noise at all. Once it gets midway over the creek, out now, once it gets midway over the creek, out now, freaked, freaked out, 50, oh, freaked out 15 year old selves start to run back to the cabin. At one point, I turn and see that it is following us, but staying over the creek. Once back to the cabin, we looked around for a bit, but found no trace of it. That's all. We have discussed it since, but never came to any conclusion on what it might be. Ooh, some weird, creepy following orbs. Um, cool. Send me your stories if you got fan stories, because you never know. Your story might be very similar to someone else's, and uh, you know you can reference that if you've had a very similar experience to some of you here. here. So send them in, alientheorist at gmail.com. Oh, yeah. Um, what else we got? We got something that we we kind of subtly did in the last case file that we didn't really mention. Prolapsers vanished. Uh, what, what? I feel like we've va- mentioned that in the yeah, last we like nine podcasts. We we the reason we didn't mention it in the last one is because we fucking mention it every single time. And we're like, <laughs> let's just stop mentioning it and just move on. Yeah, but we never mentioned what the new name was. We just said it out of the blue. Yeah, so? Theorite of the week. Woo! <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm going to do the same thing then. Fuck you guys. <laughs> Bunch of dicks. <laughs> I'm going to give Theorite of the Week to myself, probably. <laughs> theorite of the Week goes to Zell for having to deal with our dumbass. Every fucking Motherfuckers weekend. over here all the time. Goddamn week. Should see the audio files I get in the email. <laughs> Unbelievable. No, Theorite of the Week. The second one of all time. Chris Mott. And for the reason I'm giving him Theorite of the Week he is the top person on our Facebook group. He's had like hundreds of comments, likes, interactions. That a guy. Yeah, so bro. Much, so much quality stuff on our Facebook man, page. There is so much, guy. so many good memes popping up on the Facebook group. It's really funny. Oh, yeah. it's so <laughs> good, man. It's pretty good. Lots of good photos, too. A lot of photos of people wearing their shirts and We're, junk. It's cool. Yeah. Oh, I like, fucking love that. That's my favorite thing when people send us. Shit. Like we didn't, like, we didn't start. Or they're like group. posts. or like listening to my boys. Like and it's in their car. Like I love yes. that shit. Like, it's so dope. Nom, nom, nom. Like we didn't even start this group to like a few months ago, and it's already grown. We're well over a thousand people now, and yeah, it's fucking sweet. Almost like two k. I think I have no idea. It's well, it was over a thousand last week, so I don't know. It's growing. It's growing fast. Get in there. Get on the ground floor. <laughs> and we actually had so many new listeners in the last month listening to episode one. Like nice. thousands. Cool. Weird. Ooh, I don't know. And weird. then they didn't listen to any more. Yeah. And they didn't listen to episode two. Oh, but hey, yeah. we did got we one. Add the, we got did f- we add the little preamble where we're like, listen, it gets better. <laughs> <laughs> no, we haven't yet, I don't think. Oh, shit. We put that we'll get there. there. <laughs> That's it. Theory of the week. Let's get we uh, July's been a good month for uh, Patreon supporters. We got a bunch of new ones. We got Slim Buddha 69, Amanda oh. <laughs> Windress. Slim Booty. It's Slim Buddha, not Slim Booty. Oh. Slim uh-huh. Buddha, 69, you pervert. Still is cool. <laughs> Slim Buddha's probably fucking, a, he's a babe. Juan Herrera. Sarah, Sarah Amderson. Oh, I shouldn't have read that one. Whoops. <laughs> you deleted, but you, 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 you deleted snuck one in on me. Thanks for nothing. Just kidding. Yeah, thanks for, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Renee Sanchez. Uh, Johnny Coon. I think Johnny Coon is our boy who does uh, uh, Conspiracy Cafe. New podcast. Go check him out. Pa- Conspiracy Go Cafe. Go check him out. It's good stuff. Um, Christopher Randolph. And I think that's all. I think I'm getting back in. Nope. Chris Mott. Uh, Chris Mott. Jessica that's Gomez. Pro, that's or, a, that's not theory, the prolapse. That's the right of the week. Chris yeah. Mott. He's also a yeah. patron. Boom. Yeah. Look at that. What a beauty. Uh, Merrick. It's hard to say. Zach, uh, Zinger, and let's go one more. Parker Kyuk. No, actually, hold on. It's actually Parker Kike, and I know this because Parker Kike messaged us, and he goes, my last name is pronounced Kike. Can you get Andrew to say it? (laughs) (laughs) 
Not happening, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> there comes some more one stars. Oh, Here they come. Thanks, Parker. That, I when I read that, it gave me a good laugh. Sorry, I kind of forgot. And then when I saw your uh, last name, instantly remembered. Uh, that's all for now. There might be more if we missed you. Don't. We'll get you eventually. Eventually. Uh, what else we got? Now that's it. Up this one. Got, up. You got any? Uh, want to read some reviews or? Uh, no, have we passed the storm of fucking one stars? No, is it safe? Okay, I, I, I will. Re- yes, there were some nice ones. I'm gonna read some, but I'm gonna preface this with, I wasn't reading some five stars and stuff because it was, it was turning into a little bit of people using five stars to get mad at people making one stars and then people doing one stars. <laughs> get mad at people making five stars. Five stars. Should actually have so a chance to like, read through it. It's quite entertaining. Yeah, I, not I, me. I was like, I was it's like, entertaining I just for everybody but me. I just wasn't in that. I, I, a hundred percent. I like reading the one star reviews. I like sometimes they're <laughs> very critical, and because people <laughs> listen to us talk to each other, every now and then one hits real close to home, and you're like, oh, Ooh. oh, oh, oh <laughs> <sting>. that hurt. <laughs> you're like, ooh. So we can take it. But, we can take it. We can take it. But they're okay. good. Uh, but. I love the, I love getting the it. love from people. So let's read a couple. I uh, came for the conspiracy, stayed for the random. A five star review from Sage Anthony. Uh, my fiance recommended you this podcast. Recommended me this podcast uh, a couple of months ago, <laughs> and I have binged through all the episodes. So much better than a lot of the other conspiracy podcasts out there. Well, buddy, we got a ton of friends, and you probably haven't listened to them. Got to give them a try. Yeah. Too. <laughs> they have a found a way to keep you coming back week after week, never knowing what you're going to get. And I love it. From messed up EMT stories to random drunken hijinks and conspiracies being broken down in a way that doesn't make you feel crazy. They do it all. And the best part, no ads ever. Um, Boom. Got another one here from USA. Obsessed. I start, This is five-star review from I saw a UFO and I like it. Liked it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a good hey. That's good shit. That's I started listening to the show after seeing a UFO myself a few months ago. I was instantly hooked. I've learned about so many things from listening to this. Also, I love that you guys look how you sound. Except Mr. Conspiracy. (laughs) Followed his Instagram and found out he's actually kind of hot. Oh, (laughs) Mr. Conspiracy. That's bad news. That's bad news for the rest of us because none yes. of us were mentioned in that. We were not mentioned to be good looking. So, <laughs> so you bad. guys look how you sound. You guys, she said, said, you guys look like a bunch of fucking idiots. Yeah. Glad, I'm glad. Pretty much had the rest of you pegged. <laughs> uh, I would never have guessed that. Anyways, keep up the good work, boys. Cheers. Uh, boys on the track, five star review by. <laughs> Uh, I'm from Arkansas and lived, graduated from Benton, which is the next city from Bryant. Uh, This is the first story I've heard of this, but by far not the first I've heard of trafficking through Arkansas or the Clinton kill count. There's a lot of suspension, suspicion from Bill. That wasn't me that spelt suspension, but I realize he's saying suspicion. It's not me. I can read. (laughs) Sure, Brayden, whatever. Very quick. Whatever, Brayden. From Bill and Hillary surrounding a lot of their activity. As far as the drugs go, I'm not sure, but the mob used to use hot springs, Arkansas as a hideout, and could still have a connection to the drug trade going on today. Uh, This goes on a little bit more. Uh, (laughs) Message us on our Instagram and Facebook. We can we can talk about this. Yeah. This is just this is just discussed in the case file. We love to do it. Send it to our Facebook. I'll yeah. read one more. Uh amazing. Five star from http.digital from USA. This show is everything you ever need in life. Forget food, water, companionship, <laughs> breathing. Don't, Leave it all don't, behind. Don't forget, for don't forget those things. You need those. I found this show on accident one day and I've become absolutely addicted. I wake up, ATT, walk my dog, ATT, feed my pet, Chitlulu. Chitluhu? How do you say that word, Dan, the weird octopus thing? Cthulhu? Cthulhu. You guessed it. Well, technically it's Kululu. Kululu. You guessed it, ATT. Honestly, these guys have even convinced me of a few theories and shed light on some interesting concepts and ideas. I recently graduated, so while prepping for college, go Bruins. I listen to these guys 
It's so awesome. It feels like me and my buds chatting up about events that just don't quite make sense. Guys, seriously, go listen. It is amazing. Oh, and if this gets read on the podcast, shout out to my dog, Bullet. Bullet. (laughs) He's also addicted to ATT. Yeah, Bullet. What a nickname. Bullet. Bullet. Eyes of beauty, I bet. Yeah. Wait, is this dog? Like the actual dog? Like a dog? I'm Well, or maybe. Dog? Maybe. Uh, I wasn't sure if it's a ch- dog. Chulu. I bet if his dog's named Bullet, bet that motherfucker's fast. <laughs> if it's his buddy named Bullet, that's a- Probably I, fast, too. That, that's a cool nickname. Cool nickname, bro. <laughs> Unless he's fast in the sack. That's why they call him Bullet. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, pump. All right. <laughs> uh, that's all I got. I'm not going to read any more. We got a bunch more. We'll read some more. Cool. I'm going to play, uh, I'm going back to uh, playing music at the end of the podcast. We took a little break there. So if you've sent any music to the podcast in the last few months, please resend it because I've lost it. Wait, one other thing. Those of you who watch the videos of these and are like, we don't want a video stream. We want a podcast. This is just extra stuff we're doing. This will always come out as a podcast as well. Just usually, I'm going to say a week after the yeah, this week after released. the video podcast comes so out. So you will this will always be a podcast and all this will be a podcast. Zell just makes it pretty. I don't want to have to see your guys' faces when I listen to you talk. No. No. Okay, we get no it. one fine. should, yeah. Well, no, we don't. Yeah, none of we hey, none of us are Mr. Conspiracies over here. I don't think no. anyone wants to. <laughs> <laughs> so this week for my song of the week, this is a band I recorded. There's a local band here from uh, just outside of Kelowna called Orb Scepter Throne. Rock That's band, a fucking badass name. Any band with a with a three name like that, like you know, just three random words: orb, yeah. scepter, throne. Good fucking band. The song's called Devil, and uh, that's it. So we'll play at the end of the podcast. Brayden, anything else? Or sign it off. No. Nope. And as we always say at the end of these, keep those eyes on the skies. Yeah.